it's time for some more crits because uh specifically stop it brain or why your brain blinds you for two hours a day for those of you who don't know me i'm tyler fulce i'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. The world you see the is not real. Go. You're not living in this very moment that you're experiencing, and nothing is like it seems. It turns out your brain constructs your reality as you're experiencing it. It yeah, your mind makes it real. Your memories as they happen. It lives in totally different time spheres and tells you a story about the world that feels real. What's going on and who's really in control of your life? Well, everything you see is in the past because it takes time for light to hit your eyes and for your brain to process and interpret what you're seeing. It also explains why a couple of people can react to the same event very differently. The gap between reality and you. That's a Vision is maybe our main source of information about the world, but in reality we don't really see that much. Only a thumbnail sized area of your visual field is in high resolution while the rest is out of focus. If it doesn't feel like this, that's because it's made up by your brain using a pretty neat trick. And thankfully so, otherwise we would have massive sensory overload. If your brain didn't suppress your visual input at least somewhat, everything would be so blurry. You'd probably also get motion sickness. I mean, after all, your brain controls you, so just like control rods control excess reactivity in a nuclear power plant, your brain uses mechanisms to suppress as a biological safety system. Second, your eyes make three to four sudden jerky movements, saccades of 50 milliseconds, focusing from one point to another, scanning your environment to get different sharp images that your brain then edits together. During a saccade, your brain shuts down your vision so you don't see a wild motion blur. This means that each day for around two hours, you're completely blind. If you could actually see what your eyes see, it would look something like this. Brrr, brrr. Instead... <laughs> that sound effect? Also, are you blind for two consecutive hours, though? I guess you're just adding up the little bits and pieces of what you, what you miss out on. Also, that would imply you didn't sleep. The brain fills this time with its best guesses of what happened during the blackness. But it does way more. It turns out that you're not really experiencing time correctly. What's really happening when you're stirring milk into a cup of coffee? As the spoon hits the ceramic, light reflects off it and hits your eyes after 1.3 nanoseconds. Yeah, the ceramic vibrates and creates a shockwave of air molecules that travels to your ear in 1.2 milliseconds. Heat is picked up by fibers in your fingers that send a signal to your brain in 50 milliseconds. Three very different inputs, all processed in your brain at different times. You don't experience them separately, but as one smooth, simultaneous and connected moment. Your brain takes a moment to process and then invents a reality, a present moment that's not real. What you feel is now is in fact a selectively edited version of the past. You really only consciously experience the world 0.3 to 0.5 seconds after things happened. Well, it's kind of like, I mean, every control system uses the term brain for that particular reason, to get multiple inputs and diagnose what's going on. It'd be like trying to run your nuclear reactor while just looking at power by itself. You'd look at power, and you'd look at temperature, and you'd look at pressure, and you'd look at neutron flux in order to make a decision, in the case of the control system, deciding if it needs to step control rods in a half step, or, what, or really any type of control system. Except this is also not really true, because your brain is editing time and space way more than that, and it makes decisions completely out of your conscious control. You're living in the past. No, future. No, a made-up future. <laughs> your present, what you experience right now, is kind of the future. Imagine for a second that you're a table tennis pro. In pro table tennis, balls whoosh around what at 25 meters per second, which is pretty fast, so let's slow down time. Light passes from the ball to your eye in nanoseconds, is converted into electrical impulses that reach your brain to be processed after 100 milliseconds. And that's not trivial, because nano and milli sounds strong, small, but 
A millisecond is a million nanoseconds. Another uh, similar comparison is nuclear reactions in a nuclear bomb. They happen on the order of a few shakes. A shake is 100 nanoseconds. So by the time the observer, let's say at a safe distance of several kilometers away, depending on the yield of the weapon, observes the fireball and the beam of light from the fireball hits the observer's eyes, the nuclear reaction, the ignition, the fission reaction, creating conditions hot enough for a fusion reaction, in the case of a thermonuclear bomb, all those nuclear reactions are ancient history by the time the light hits your eyeball. Meanwhile, the ball travels 2.5 meters through the air, the length of the table. If your brain showed you the past, where the ball was 100 milliseconds ago, it would hit you before you could react. So instead, your brain takes its location, speed and direction, system. and calculates where the ball should be in the future by the time the information reaches you, and then it creates a fictional version of it. This is what you see in your fake present, a fake ball that's somewhere else. And I guess how good your hand-eye coordination is how accurate your fictional version of it can be. Of course, there's a few other steps involved in controlling your, your hands, your arms, your feet position for moving. It, gets, it can get pretty complicated. And it's kind of like one of those things, if you overanalyze doing, doing something like this, you probably forget how to do it anyway. <laughs> you don't need to just see the ball, you want to smash it back hard. If you acted now and started swinging your arm, you'd miss by a mile. Things are just too fast. So before the ball even touches your opponent's bat, your brain starts predicting where it will likely be in space after they hit, based on the other player's posture and your table tennis experience. But as it can't be sure if it will be correct, it prepares multiple different responses. Maybe the ball will be here, or here, or even here. To be ready for all of these scenarios, your brain sends pre-programmed orders to the muscles you need to jump left, right, or up, telling them to be ready for any of them at a moment's notice. For a short moment, multiple ghost versions of you exist, all equally real inside your brain. And then, as your opponent is about to lay into the swing, your brain decides on a single future that it thinks is most likely. All but one of the ghosts are deleted. You only ever experience the ghosts that won, never the potential ones. And I guess on all, and all that time, it's also sending a command to your body to execute the plan based on the ghost that won, I guess. <laughs> The order to the muscles to act out the winning movement is triggered even before the ball is hit back to you. You are totally oblivious to this. By the time you consciously see the ball coming anime. at you and decide to hit it in a particular way, your body has already hit it back. In reality, your brain already made all the decisions. Your conscious experience is nothing more than an invented future, a prediction based on the information your brain received a fraction of a second ago. I never thought of just visualizing like the ghost versions of it. I guess it's kind of like a neutron flux map, which is a way of measuring where where the majority of neutrons are in the core. That is to say where the hotter parts of the core are and and it continuously monitors it. However, it also doesn't monitor every minor fluctuation. You have automated systems to filter out the noise. So you focus on significant changes so the control system can make a decision. It's not just true for extreme sports like um, table tennis, but also for walking. Table tennis is an extreme Walking sport. is time travel. After your game, you're Going walking back future. home, seemingly choosing your path and reacting to... You're traveling into the future at a rate of one second per second. Meanwhile, your brain is operating in three different time spheres at once. It processes the sensory feedback of the past, it calculates the current state of your body, and it predicts your future. Because walking is intense. Before the signal from your foot touching the ground has even reached the brain, it's already sent the order to your foot to make the next step, and it's already calculated the muscle patterns for the next two. But what if something truly catastrophic happens? There's a banana peel, and you step on it and slip. How did it get here? Listen, don't worry about it. It turns out your brain is ready for this. So far, we spoke of your brain making... It has emergency operating procedures that are symptom-based and ready to execute on standby. It's for you, but this is not really true. You don't have a central control room where the world comes together. In <laughs> That's just at your nuclear power plant. You do have that. Different parts of your body are aware of different things at different times. Your spinal cord usually knows stuff before your brain. Senses. And even within your brain, different regions process the same event at different speeds and make independent decisions. As your foot catches the peel, the gyroscope inside your ears notices a sudden change of your position in space. 
It submits this information to your brainstem and spinal cord, the this must happen quickly section of your body. They immediately trigger emergency recovery patterns and send orders to different muscle groups. Within 200 milliseconds, pre-programmed sequences activate to catch your fall. Your arms shoot out, your other leg stiffens to support your weight, your core muscles contract to stabilize you. 100 milliseconds later, when you become aware that you're tripping, your body is already recovering. You are only just now catching up. Okay, so we've learned that your brain is constantly oh, predicting is reality around you, makes decisions about the best way to act, and then shows you an edited version. Totally makes sense, but you really want to be in charge of all that. No. But your brain is not just predicting the external world. And that's why reactor operators are there for the big decisions. A lot of it's run by automatic control systems, and these systems apply signal processing algorithms in order to interpret and predict values and trends so the operators can make the executive decision on something like when to emergency shut down the reactor. That's also reinforced through procedures and training, but a lot of times you're relying on automatic systems. And as far as emergency shutdowns, it can do it by itself. Reactor operator training involves making sure the automatic systems do what they're designed to do and intervene when malfunctions occur. Right now, it's predicting a way more complex thing, you. Are you just a prediction of your brain? Why do you feel about the world the way you do? Your sense of hunger, your energy level, and especially your emotions are not just objective reactions to what state you're in, but predictions. Your brain's prediction of what you'll need soon or need to be ready for. You're probably used to This get is getting a little more out there, a bit more philosophical. And also stuff like your food, there's your gut brain too. So interesting. You're all going to bed roughly around the same time. And as the time approaches, your brain releases hormones to prepare you. A self-fulfilling <laughs> prophecy. You get hungry or tired because your brain assumes this is the time when this is needed. This is the most striking thing about your emotions. They aren't just reactions to the outside world, they're predictions. When you go to a party, like your brain isn't waiting to see how you feel once you get there based on how the party actually is. It analyzes your experiences of past parties and who it expects to be there. Maybe close friends you feel safe around. Maybe people you don't know who are a less socially secure bet. Maybe your brain remembers a party where you felt anxious and that experience stuck. This can be pretty annoying. If your brain predicts anxiousness... I guess it's a defensive mechanism. Yeah, uh, I think we've all been there. Just your heart rate, hormone levels, and muscle tensions before you even enter the room. It prepares your body for anxiety, making response. you actually feel anxious, which then confirms the brain's prediction and gets saved for future reference. Does this make you feel like you're just along for the ride, forced to experience whatever predictions your brain feeds you? Thankfully... I don't know if it's just your brain though i'm thinking there is some there's some gut feelings there's feeling in your heart too but i think this video is just focused on mainly brain stuff so sure it's not quite like that your conscious self is obviously not the decider of most things as you go through your day but that is not what it's good at anyway automated process. your brain and all of these different organ systems decide a lot of things but they're more like butlers taking care of all the busy work you may not be in the driver's seat, but you are the passenger that decides where to go. What your conscious self is good at is long-term planning and abstract thinking. It's a storyteller that tells the story of your life to your brain and to yourself, wherever the edges of these overlapping entities melt into each other. You are able to... Think of it as you're the, uh, you're the control room supervisor too, and the brain is all, the, all your reactor operators. <laughs> the big picture that your internal prediction machine could never begin to grasp. You are the part of you that can edit and write new predictions into the system. Sometimes you and your brain disagree on what's correct, but in the end, you are the person who tells the story about who you are in this world. A story so convincing that you experience it as undeniable reality. And as a happy accident, this is one of the reasons why practice and drills are done so many times for reactor operators and control room supervisors and their support staff for that matter. It's so, a lot of this becomes second nature to you and that's really just practicing anything. So when you have the real emergency, it's second nature. Granted, there's still differences because a simulator, like any other video game, 
system has lag associated with it, so things respond a bit faster in real life, but overall crews are pretty well prepared for it. Your conscious self is great at being happy about ice cream, fascinated by internet videos, and thinking deeply about Pokemon types. I haven't gotten much into Pokemon since I was a kid, but I can see the appeal still. This is fascinating. I like the ones that are fairly optimistic. There have been some of these that have gone a little bit too crazy, but this one wasn't bad. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.